Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for February 8th, 2012. In this week's Five Minutes to Enlightenment, a new atomic X-ray laser is a big advance in the quest for shorter wavelengths, an EUV frequency comb debuts, hollow spheres trap light to boost solar panels, and we look at projections for the laser market in 2012. The first atomic X-ray laser fulfills a 1967 prediction and opens the door to new medicines, materials, and devices. The new laser was created by aiming the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center's LINAC coherent light source at a capsule of neon gas, setting off an avalanche of X-ray emissions that amplified the laser light 200 million times. The new laser fulfills a 45-year-old prediction that X-ray lasers could be made by first removing inner electrons from atoms and then inducing electrons to fall from higher to lower energy levels, releasing a single color of light in the process. Until the LCLS became operable in 2009, no X-ray source had been powerful enough to create this type of laser, which represents a big advance in the quest towards shorter wavelength lasers. Next, they will try to create even shorter pulse, higher energy atomic X-ray lasers using oxygen, nitrogen, or sulfur gases. The first frequency comb in the extreme ultraviolet spectrum band has the potential to advance nuclear clocks and to measure previously unexplored behavior in atoms and molecules. Laser-generated frequency combs are the most accurate method available for precisely measuring frequencies of light. They are created with ultra-fast pulsed lasers and produce a span of very fine, evenly spaced teeth, each a specific frequency, which can be used like a ruler to measure light, usually in the visible or near-infrared wavelengths. The new tool by physicists at GILA, a joint venture of NIST and UC Boulder, could help develop nuclear clocks based on changes in energy levels of an atom's nucleus, instead of on electronic structure, as in today's atomic clocks. The EUV comb is the first system for high-accuracy laser spectroscopy at wavelengths below 200 nanometers, a frequency of more than 1 petahertz or quadrillion cycles per second. Collaborator IMRA America designed and built the high-power precision deuterium fiber laser specially for this project. Next, they hope to continue extending combs toward the shorter wavelengths by creating one in the X-ray frequency. Tiny hollow spheres of nanocrystal and silicon can now do for light what circular rooms do for sound. Trap it without degrading it. The phenomenon of having a whisper travel without distortion around a large circular room to be heard clearly on the other side is known as a whispering gallery. Devices that confine light at resonant frequencies for long periods of time are known as optical whispering galleries. A team at Stanford discovered they could improve photovoltaic panels by making such a gallery out of hollow balls of nanocrystal and silicon. That material has a high electrical efficiency and is durable under harsh sunlight, something challenging for other types of thin solar films, but is relatively poor at light absorption, requiring thick layers of material that take a long time to assemble. The engineers made the spheres by coating glass balls with silicon, then etching away the glass centers in an acid bath. Light circulates around the circumference of the shells a few times as its energy is gradually absorbed by the silicon. The longer light is kept in the material, the better the absorption and two or three layers of nanoshells on top of each other resulted in even higher absorption. The nanoshells also use substantially less material, are faster to make than other types of solar cells, can bend and twist without damage, and are relatively indifferent to the angle of incoming light. The laser market will continue to grow in 2012, with fiber lasers continuing to make inroads against solid-state lasers in low-power applications. That's the takeaway from a recent report by Longbow researchers Mark Douglas, after interviewing sources at Photonics West and attending Penwell's Marketplace seminar. Longbow also sees high-power CO2 lasers experiencing low single-digit growth in 2012, in spite of the inroads fiber lasers are making with end-users and OEMs. And that's pretty much in keeping with a story I did about seven months ago for Spectra about fiber versus disc lasers. And uh, people at the time were saying, well, you know, don't count out CO2 just yet because they're still having robust sales. And it looks like that's continuing. Yeah, the, uh, the mood at Photonics West was upbeat, Douglas said, with uh, most laser companies expecting growth in 2012. That's something that we found as well while we were there. Industrial laser demand appears solid through at least the first half of 2012, and many expect China and the microelectronics markets to pick up by the second half of the year. And speaking of Photonics West, we met many of you while we were there, so we know that you're out there watching, and we'd love to hear from you with your questions, comments, suggestions about the show at lightmatters at photonics.com. And as always, thanks for watching, and remember it's only five minutes to enlightenment. I want to change the diagnostic system make early diagnosis using light, laser or many other light sources. 
make the diagnostics f uh, easy and early so that uh, there will be early treatment, therefore there will be happy living. Thank you.